Welcome back to Forza City Education. This is Zed. Today I'm going to be talking about HTBX again. So my previous DD is in the description below if you want to watch it after this one here. It's going to go through technical analysis. Although that is expired, just make sure to look into the news and company's financials. I have an update here, so I'm going to go through technical analysis, latest news, and latest development for this company and how I'm going to play this, company, uh, this stock. Make sure to drop a like to this video before we move forward to help this channel grow. Subscribe and leave your notifications on to get the latest added videos and let's jump right into it. So one month, one day here, we get to look into first things. The MACD here is actually curving back up uh, after it has seen a bit more negative on the 6th. Although that kind of reversal is not confirmed yet, we still need one more day where it actually does decrease in order to call it perhaps a movement towards that reversal. Uh, Stock price is still within the trading action zone between the 10 SMA and the 30 EMA and the moving averages still look bullish. So the 10 SMA is above the 30 EMA and the stock price is above the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. So moving on towards the ADX, ADX is a little bit too high and usually that's a warning sign where a uh, trend might really easily break uh, really close to around 50. So it's 49.35. It did break around... I believe somewhere around the 23rd where it was around almost 60 and then dipped from there. The willing percent R puts it a little bit more close towards the neutral, although it did climb a little bit more towards from the oversold, so it's moving from oversold to neutral. Uh, might actually a little bit be not a healthy movement, but we need to be a little bit more oversold. Uh, now, momentum here is actually picking up uh, all the way from the fifth back to where we're at right now, so that is a healthy movement, although that kind of momentum is slowing down. So we need to look into the one hour perspective in order to determine what the current movements are. So we get to see momentum here has dropped quite a little in the extended market. Uh, moving average look a little bit more sloppy than anything here. Uh, still the price is under the 200 SMA, so that is still considered a little bit bearish. Uh, but we're seeing just more of a sloppy movement on the one hour scale, and it doesn't tell us much. It just tells us it's trading sideways. Now the ADX shows in a very potential, a very strong potential of uh, transforming, but it doesn't tell us so much. So we need to look into the moving average band. Uh, Right over here, you get to see the moving average band and the stock price is expected to trade between 202, middle is 225, and the top is 249. Now coming in towards trend lines, and here's your trend line, I'm going to be drawing it here. The stock hasn't broken the trend line yet and the bottom of the trend line is sitting in somewhere just above 205 um, and that hasn't been broken yet. So that is a good sign. Now going on towards Fibonacci retracements gonna pick up here and we get to see on the one hour scale now how that shapes up so you get to see that there's a strong Fibonacci retracement support happening at 206 a traditional one happening at 2 uh, 2.1 and then above that sorry under that under the Fibonacci support we're seeing a 202 and then we're seeing 193 here um, and then we're going down way below to 157 154 137 132, 124, 114, and 106, 108. Now I'm going towards resistances. What we get to see here is uh, a resistance at say 218, 2.2, and then 224. Uh, then we're seeing a bit more around around 2.3, 2.36, 2.41. Around here, and then you get to see a Fibonacci resistance of 249, 254, 262, um, and then what else we're looking at here is 278, 276, 278, and then 282, and then Fibonacci at 292, and then right above that is around three dollars. So there's an up uh, up growth right there. So nothing significant to see other than that. Let's try to look quickly Fibonacci arc is holding here and it doesn't tell us much nope let's move on towards current news and current updates and towards this company before moving on to how I play it this is the company's profile so in terms of institutional buyers we get to see that there is a bit more interest around august uh so far picked up really nicely uh, very much closer to uh, so the latest purchase of closer to 400,000 shares uh just because they increased their position they did not just well, uh, just recently buy it uh 13,000 shares although they increased their shares by 27 so that's more around two three thousand shares and three thirty thousand shares here happening on bit more this one i'm not sure it does uh, record that there's an additional purchase but it doesn't mention how much um 
22, sorry, 23,000 shares there. So there's a bit more interest uh, on the institutional purchases lately. 8K filing here coming in towards the COVID-19 vaccine uh, updates. Uh, so basically it demonstrates that the in vivo confirmation of vaccine in animal models and expansion of the human HLA restricted T cells against uh, basically this is the COVID-19 spike protein kind of vaccine. Um, and the testing demonstrate expansions of antibodies supporting CD4 plus and virus killing CD8 plus T cells in lungs and animals and a major site for COVID-19 infection. That is a positive update for the COVID-19 vaccine that they're working on or treatment. Uh, going towards HTBX as well, uh, annual meeting for stockholders. That's happening on the on August 21st, beginning at 10 a.m. Uh, there's going to be different things they're going to be voting on. So uh, additional of $15 million per share that usually gets used to different things. Uh, so that's basically nothing very much significant telling you more regarding dilution. Of course, the stock does not need a reverse split. Uh, so it's just another meeting. Nothing significant there happening. Quarter two results here. What we get to see is that uh, in terms of granting a license revenue, it has increased from twenty from this quarter previous to the previous quarter. Overall, what we get to see here is that the expenses have remained almost the same, but loss from operation has decreased. So that's a good sign. You get to see that the net loss per share has been almost one third of what it was before but here's the thing this is based on extra shares so it's diluted from last quarter so what we're looking on uh, in terms of the net loss it's very much the same as we'd had last time now moving on towards how it played the stock and perhaps latest news in terms of additional uh earnings and whatnot so there's nothing additional here um i believe on 14th of august actually before market you will get to see quarter two, and that is confirmed uh, in terms of their earnings. So that's next week. Their estimated EPS is negative 0.14, and the revenue of uh, 300 and whoops, I I'm a bit clumsy, 342 thousand dollars. So how would I play the stock? It's definitely a, an interesting one. So that's going to happen on the Friday uh, before market. And what I want to do here is I want to snatch this price really closer to the 209 support. Uh, where it's been tested before and hey if it does dip 192 i'm even getting a bigger position uh, and definitely i do see it running uh closer to there it's definitely a hold with a potential buy for me if it does dip just quite a little or it does test that support and reject it um, i'm considering buying the stock and perhaps selling it really closer towards uh the end of the week where the earnings would be so it's before market perhaps sometime on thursday where i would consider selling or friday morning uh, what do you think about the sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and you have a wonderful day.